Y'all, we got three more weddings last night. We got three more weddings. That That is crazy. They course corrected. They knew what we wanted. They made changes. What's good, everybody? Welcome and welcome back to the channel. I'm Tammy. This is Tammy Talks. We are here to talk Married at First Sight, Season 18, Episode 2, Windy City Weddings. And we got some weddings, y'all. We got three more weddings and the start of a fourth. By Episode 3, we will have seen everybody get married. So it seems like next week's episode is going to be all about, like, the receptions. And then we are headed off to the honeymoon, y'all. Married at First Sight! Tell me something. Tell me something. But before we get started, y'all, if you have not already, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. I am now, I am now less than 1,300 subscribers away from 30,000. So y'all, do me a solid. If you have not already, hit that subscribe button. If you're brand new, hit that subscribe button. If this is your second, third, or fourth time and you aren't sure if you like me or not, you do. So go ahead and hit that subscribe button, y'all, all right? Uh, thumbs up the video and then leave your comments down below. If you don't do anything else, thumbs up the video. Let's get started. So we pick up where the last episode left off with Madison and Alan's wedding. So let me put them up on the screen for y'all again. All right. So Madison is preparing to walk down the aisle and she's hoping for some magic, okay? So he seems excited. When he sees her, he said he feels like he won the lottery. And I said, okay, I do not like Alan's beard. Something about it is distracting for me. I don't know what it is, but I do not like Alan's beard, y'all. I can't take it. So she got that damn banana in her bouquet. But you know what? Fine. It shows that she has a sense of humor. I think he appreciated her sense of humor. It, it works for them. So, he came up, and he was trying to think of a ship name for them already. Y'all not there yet. Y'all not there yet. Get your ship name after. Get your ship name after the honeymoon. See if y'all last through the honeymoon. Then try to come up with a ship name. So, Madison's people want him to know that she is cheerful, and she values hard work. She's smart AF. She has a thirst for adventure and loves to travel. Um, and then she will always have your back and support you. Alan's people said that he has a vibrant personality. I said, lies, you tell. Ain't nothing about that man been vibrant. Nothing about, a nothing about Alan has seemed vibrant. But if they say that he has a vibrant personality, who, who are me to judge, okay? Uh, but, well... So, he likes to bake bread, and he likes anime. Um, he, was, he wants a partner that is okay with him being very eclectic. I think she likes to, she had like a life-changing experience in Germany. He likes Germany, so, you know, y'all can go there for y'all real honeymoon. She just stay together. And they seem to really like each other. So, good for them. I'm scared the mic is muted. Okay, so good for them. So Alan, after the wedding, you know, they're outside talking. Alan said that he has been trying to find his person for so long, but everything is a swipe now. You know, when you're on the dates, you're swiping, swiping, swiping. And he thinks that it aids into the culture of, like, wondering what's next. Wondering if the grass is always greener. And Madison is like... The grass is greener where you water it. And I guess Alan has never heard that because he felt like that was just a life-changing experience and life-changing statement. But kudos to them. Um, so she implement, implements HR software for big companies. He implements softwares for companies as well. But he is on the finance side. So, so far, so good with Madison and Alan. Nobody seemed to have gotten the ick. OK, nobody seems like we're post. The conversation was flowing. I, they look OK together on this picture. They seem to have a lot in common. Kudos for them. Kudos to them. We then pan over to Carla and Juan. Something about Carla rubbing me raw. 
I don't know what it is, y'all. Something about Carla, I don't know. I, I, I don't know. So Carla feels like this is meant to be. She said that everything is flowing smoothly and there haven't been any hiccups as of yet. Meanwhile, over in the groom suite, when he, uh, Juan and his family are getting ready, Juan is such a pretty man. Now, last week, I said he was doing a little too much. I felt as if, you know, he had a little too much dip on his chip, and he wasn't as fine as he was making it out to be, but he is. <laughs> Juan, like, he almost looks airbrushed, right? He looks like, an, like, I was like, what is he wearing? Is it NARS? Maybe it's Maybelline. I don't know, but Juan is a pretty pretty ass man so he gets emotional like very emotional talking about the unknown and how comfortable he is in the unknown so Juan is an immigrant came over here at the age of seven and his life has been so full of unknowns that this doesn't seem crazy to him it seems natural and I'm like okay he got like really really choked up about it so he said that he cherishes and he just embraces the unknown. And I, to some degree, that's a wonderful way to go through life, right? Um, so meanwhile, with Carla, her sisters give her a letter to read from her mother. So her father is not comfortable being on camera. Her father does not want to be on camera. So her father isn't there. But her mother um isn't there because the father isn't there so the mother wanted to support the father in not being there I don't know how I feel about that I don't know how I feel about that like I get it you you want to support your husband I guess but this is your daughter that's th that's weird to me I'm sorry but I was like oh Okay, I thought that was odd. I'm going to try to reserve some judgment from that because on one hand, I understand that a lot of these people's families don't want to be on TV, especially their parents. And I'm cool with that. I'm fine. But we have also seen instances on Married at First Sight where, and Love is Blind, where the family doesn't want to be on camera, but they're still there. So like, you can't just have... The cameraman just pan on her father's feet. I just, I don't know how I feel about her mom being like, well, your daddy doesn't want to come, so I, I don't want to come either. I want to support him not coming. Oh, uh, okay. Okay, I, I guess. So both of Juan's parents are there, and they, you know, let him know they support him wholeheartedly. His father was like, good luck. <laughs> Good luck. So they both look pleased with one another. Um, sh when they get up there, they introduce themselves. I feel like after she saw that he was Latino, um, or Latinx, Hispanic, which one is it, y'all? Because I don't want y'all yelling at me. Is it Hispanic, Latino? When she saw that he was of the culture, I feel like she th put her accent on a little thick. We have not heard her say her name was Carla like that. Carla. She has not been saying her name like that throughout this past, th this, well, I guess this past episode. But um, she asked him if he's in love. I said, oh, she crazy. Now, some people are going to say that, oh, that was just a joke. No, it wasn't. No, it wasn't. Carla meant that shit. Carla meant that. I, I guarantee you Carla meant that. Something about Carla just, I don't know. So he was like, um, I hope we can get there. Shit, that's how I felt. She doing a lot, ain't she, Juan? So Carla's people say that she's adventurous, spunky, and one of a kind. She's an old soul, a listener, and she sees the best in everybody. She believes that everything happens for a reason, which I, I do too. I believe everything happens for a reason, every conversation, every interaction, every heartbreak, every smile, every argument. I believe that everything in life happens for a reason. So does Carla. 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 I'm going to get it, y'all. Um, she's a foodie, and she is always late. Nothing to be proud of. I hate when people brag about being late. It's not endearing. I think it's tacky, personally. I'm not late anywhere. 
I'm always early. I'm always the, the first person there in some cases. Being late is not a badge of honor. Um, and she does not like being told no. And she kind of made a face on some. And I was like, ooh, she doesn't like being told no. So Juan's people said that he's loyal, fun-loving, outgoing, ambitious. Um, he believes in multiple streams of income, okay? <laughs> Um, and he also believes in multiple streams of joy. He works hard and he plays hard. I don't like Carla's wedding hair. It's very, like, it's just, it's just big. It's low-key giving helmet, right? I don't like it. She seemed to like it. And then when Juan was like, her hair is pretty, I said, oh, if you like it, okay, Juan, sure. So they go outside to talk after the ceremony and she is like, okay, so I'm busy. I'm a boss. I do this. I do that. I got a lot of shit going for myself. And then she was like, I don't care for small talk. You're going to have to. I don't like small talk either. I hate small talk. I loathe small talk, right? I feel like you can get all the answers that you need in basic conversation. Instead of asking somebody flat out, so what's your favorite color? There are other ways you can get to that point, right? Oh, why? Oh. So what made you get the, the black car? Okay. What made you get the, the, the blue phone case? Like there are, there are other ways that you can get to finding out basic answers like that. So I don't like small talk, but girl, this is a stranger. You're going to have to engage in some small talk, right? So she says she prefers a deep conversation. Okay, Carla. Um, he said he likes to cook and he likes to clean. And she was like, oh, so are you a homebody? And he was like, no. <laughs> he said that, look, I got a sales startup. I have a construction company and I have a typical nine to five. So like, I like to let loose and kick back, you know, and, you know, do the damn thing on the weekends. I don't see a problem with that. If your bills are getting paid and your, your, your place is clean, I don't see why she would have an issue with Juan wanting to kick back a little bit. Um, but then she said that she hasn't dated many Latinos. And I was like, okay, I don't have a problem with that. No issues. But that's that's interesting. So I think she was saying that she would like to go to Colombia. He is from Colombia. He seemed a little like, from her, from her conversation a little bit. So we'll see how that goes. We will see how that goes. We then get to Emin and y'all said I was saying it wrong. Ikechi? I'm going to get it, y'all. I promise I'm going to get it. It's it's not I catchy. Ikechi? Ikechi? So Emin and Ikechi. Ikechi? Ikechi? Emin and Ikechi. So she said that she didn't think she would get married this way. Her friends were like us either. So he thinks that marriage is a compromise and a way of creating a bond. So he said that he has had great representation. His friends are all married. His friends that were all there, they were all handsome too. So his friends are all married. And he said that kind of looking at them, seeing how they are navigating this, this next phase of their life by being married. He feels that, you know, he has a good base. He knows what he needs to do because he has seen from the best. Okay. Meanwhile, over with Emin, one of her bridesmaids gives her a pendant with her dad's picture. So remember her father passed away a couple of years ago. She has a breakdown and I feel like maybe you should have gave it to her before she put her makeup on. Same with Carla. Like they gave Carla that letter from her mom and she cried straight through her makeup. So I was like, why get y'all give them this before they get their faces done. So we find out that Emma's mother is not there, but her sister said, I went and talked to mom last night and she, she hopes and wishes that you have the marriage that you desire. So Akeche, not Akeche, Emin tells us that her mother is a typical Nigerian, um, Nigerian woman that believes in arranged marriage. So while her mother is like, look, if you're going to go out and marry somebody that I didn't pick for you, fine. But she doesn't like that it's being broadcast in this way. And I'm like, okay, I can see that. I can see that. 
But we, this is a, a season where we don't have a lot of family members. That's unfortunate. So, Ikechi is sitting with his groomsmen and decides to write Emin a poem. And I said, mm, you don't want to write one earlier in the in the morning, but that's fine. He writes her this poem. And back with Emin, we find out that she's been engaged before because she's like, I'm finally going to make it down the aisle. So apparently whatever happened in that last engagement just didn't work out. It sounds like she's the one that caught it off. So I hope we get more into that. I hope we explore that a little more because I'm wondering why it didn't transpire. Why, why didn't it, you know, turn into a wedding and like, what was the final straw? What was going on? How long ago was it? How long was the engagement? How long was the relationship? I think a lot of those things are are noteworthy for sure. So before she leaves the bridal suite, uh, his poem gets delivered and they were hyping it up. Bars, bars. It was I. <laughs> it was I. It wasn't nothing like now. It was it was a very nice little poem. And she sent over to him some like little champagne bottles, some glasses and a decanter that she wants him to save for their one year anniversary. So I love his glasses. Y'all know I'm a glasses person. I love his glasses. They looked so pretty against his skin tone. Like I loved that. I want it. I want some. I need to like take a picture of his face. And put it into Google so I can try to get some. Now, he had these on, these blue with the um, uh, tortoise shell on the side. He had these on on the after show. So I'm wondering if he got his other ones from Zilu too. Watch me put his whole face into Google search so I can find those glasses. They look so nice on his skin tone. Oh my God, that was a pretty pair of glasses. So, um... Her um, girlfriends are hyping her up. She's off to get her husband. They dancing and moving and grooving. And her cousin is going to walk her down the aisle. So Edmund's people say that she embodies humility, her ambitions, and her... Mm, I don't know what this word that I wrote down. Because <laughs> it's not a word. Her ambitions and something else shape her as a force to be reckoned with. Ikechi's people say that his ambition is remarkable and he has an unwavering creativity. He also wears his heart on his sleeve. So after the ceremony, they're talking. We find out that her name, Emmy, means peace, is Ibo because, you know, she is she's Nigerian Ikechi's name is Ibo as well. He is not Nigerian, but he has an Ibo name, and his name means God's power. So, <coughs> excuse me. So he said that he got what he wanted because he wanted um like somebody that what did he say? He wanted somebody that was gonna take care of people and something like that, a nurturer, and we know that she's a nurse practitioner. She says she wanted a leader. So by him being a high school counselor. They were like, okay, they were listening, listening, because y'all know the experts typically don't. So he was like, look, I told the experts I wanted a black woman. I said, come on, black man, because so many times on here we have seen some of these black men come on to this show, and they do not want a black woman. So she said that she wanted a man that dates black women. You know why? Because, again, we have seen so many times so many times that the experts, you know that these black men do not want a black woman. You know that and y'all still match them up and it becomes painfully obvious. So, so far, so good. I like them together. They're cute. Um, he mentions that, I think she mentioned she was engaged before. He mentioned that he tried for the show before and said that it was before when he was living in Houston, he auditioned for the show didn't work out. He didn't get picked. And she was like, it's because your wife is in Chicago. You just had to move. I said, okay, come on y'all. So, so far, so good. What a pleasant episode so far, y'all. Y'all have no idea how like shocked and excited I am about these episodes so far. 
So we get a little bit of Camille and Thomas um, after their ceremony because they got married last week. And he tells her that he was adopted as a baby. So started his relationship with his biological mom seven years ago. And his last name is McDonald. I said, that's kind of childish. And I feel like that's Dr. Pepper picking that because y'all know how I feel about her name being Pepper Schwartz and her deciding to go by Dr. Pepper instead of Dr. Schwartz. Childish. She could at least give us a Dr. Pepper t-shirt. But we didn't get a lot about Camille and Thomas, but it seems like um, in the next episode, she finds out some things that she is a little uh about at their reception. And then finally, we get more about Michelle and David. So I want to I want to address this. There were a number of people that were in the comments asking, why is it, why do I think it's problematic that this white woman requested a light-skinned black man? I shouldn't have to explain that. I got some people in the comments that were saying, well, I, I'm a dark-skinned black man and I prefer dark-skinned black women. Your preference is perfectly fine, right? Your preference is your preference. However, to come on a show and say, find me a brown skinned woman, I think that's a little. If, if, I don't see why y'all don't think see that as problematic. It is problematic for a white woman to come on and say, I want a black man, but he got to be light skinned, light, bright, damn near white. That's what it translated to me. If you don't think that it is problematic, then you just don't. If you think that I talk too much about race, I'm not the channel for you. I'm black. I'm going to talk about race. But you saw my black ass when you came on, when you clicked on the video. All right? Let's not do this. Um, there were people saying that they didn't realize that colorism was a thing in the black community. I don't know if y'all be trolling or what, but it's to me. It's problematic to a number of people on YouTube. It was problematic to a number of people on, um, to a number of people on social media. It is problematic for Michelle, a white woman to say, I want a light skinned black man. Okay. People were saying, well, why is it okay that he wants a woman with blonde hair and blue eyes? If he wants a white woman, he wants a white woman. That's that's not problematic. But if y'all don't understand the difference in saying I want a light skinned black man and not a not a, a, a caramel or a dark skinned black man as a white woman, I don't know what to tell you. All right. So she said that <clears throat> she woke up that morning and she cried or that night she cried as she left her apartment. But she woke up this morning and she still really wants to do it. She is tired of being a third and fifth wheel with her friends, but then don't go when they out as couples. I just, whenever people come onto the show and they're saying that they're tired of being a couple, they're tired of being a third wheel, you're not getting married for the right reasons. So today is David's birthday. Now, David said that his father got married on his birthday. His parents have been together for 37, 36 years. His little brother got married on his birthday. And him and his, uh, his little brother and his wife have been together for six years. So by today being David's birthday, I guess he feels that it is fated because the men in his family, it has worked out great for them. I don't think it's the day, David. I think it's them putting in the work for their marriage, okay, but I'm going to go along with you with it, so David said that he comes from a woman-dominated family, and they are all bad bitches, Lord have mercy, there was a better way you could have described these women, <laughs> there was a better way you could have described that, but I, I get what you were saying, so <clears throat> I'm glad he put his bang ponytail up because he was not going to get married with that ponytail like this. He has beautiful hair, but I just don't feel like the way that he was wearing it the, all last episode would work for me. It was given Janet Jackson. Is it the, is it the control album cover? Y'all know what album cover I'm talking about. Hold on, let me pull it up real quick. 
I feel like it's, yeah. It's giving Janet Jackson the Control album cover. Y'all see how her hair is? That's how he been walking around the whole time. And I didn't really like that. So I'm glad that he, you know, put it together a little more, a little more streamlined, okay? A little more poised for his wedding. So his brother tells him, gives him like a little book about how to be a husband or something like that, with just a bunch of little cute stuff in there. And his brother said, look, do not react quickly like you usually do. I said, okay, so that means you have a temper. I know what that means. So you have a temper. His brother then tells him to listen, take it all in, comprehend what she's saying, and then react accordingly or respond accordingly i said let me find out your little brother is more mature than you uh, david and i'm not talking because i'm not talking because the little brother got married first but he gives more mature than david for sure so david said that it's scary leaving the nest nigga you are 36 years old no 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 no, 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 no. Then his parents are like, oh, my baby boy's leaving. I don't want you to go. I said, what's going on? What's going on here? That came out weird. Like, did y'all have the same going on for the little brother? So David lets us know that he lives in his parents' basement. And he said it's basically because he doesn't want to pay rent. Um, but he said that he has two jobs. My man has two jobs. And he would just rather own something as opposed to rent. So why don't you own then? And I understand it's Chicago. And I understand Chicago is expensive. I am in Chicago at least once or twice every month. I understand how expensive it can be. But so are you saving with the intent to buy a house with your wife? Because what I'm expecting out of you, David, right, is it let's say that you and Michelle stay married. I, I'm expecting for y'all to go from the shared apartment to to buying a, um to buy, getting a mortgage. Then they like I haven't wanted to say it yet, but David gives me fuckboy. David gives me huge fuckboy vibes. I ooh, I don't know. So, but we see we see them get married next week. Like I said, the receptions are gonna happen, and then we are on our way to. The honeymoons. This, wow. Wow, 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 wow. I'm shocked. I'm shocked. I'm pleased. But I'm shocked. But let me know what you guys thought about this episode down below. I think the season is going to be good. So after the honeymoons, um, then I'll start breaking down the couples, I think, and giving everybody their individual episodes like I typically do. So we will get into all of that. Again, if you have not already subscribed to the channel, Thumbs up the video and I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace.